So, while I was making this video, I came to the realization that this is the most hated Sonic game, and I'm doing a challenge for it. If anyone were to do this, it would be for some big, special occasion. And then this happened. Y'all like the content I make. Uh, seriously, thank y'all so much for the positivity and support. It really means a lot to me. Now! As to how I thought of this challenge... Well, I mean, that's kinda what the game lacks. A challenge. Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric is the easiest game I think I've ever played in my life, solely because this game never penalizes the player. Allow me to explain. Just like in every other Sonic game, if you get hit, you lose rings. Get hit with zero rings, you die. But unlike those Sonic games, when you respawn, you don't go back to the last checkpoint. Instead, you just reappear wherever you left off. In fact, you don't even lose any of your progress when you come back. Almost as if you never died. You could carelessly bulldoze your way through, get hit as many times as you want, but suffer no consequences for playing poorly. So that got me thinking. Could we create some actual stakes and make this game challenging? Yes, we can. Rise of Lyric doesn't care if we get hit, so instead, let's care about it immensely. <sighs> I do not know how to make that sentence work. Is it possible to beat Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric without getting hit? The rules are as followed. Er, well, single rule. Don't get hit. We all know what it looks like to get hit in a Sonic game, and in fact, I kind of just explained it a few seconds ago, but just so we're all on the same page, getting hit looks like this. And this. And I'm also going to count this. If anything like that happens, we will pause the game, click save and quit, and restart from wherever the last save point is. Oh, also, I'm sure some of you are thinking we could just skip over everything with Knuckles' infinite jump glitch. I mean, we could. That wouldn't make the video very interesting. So, we'll be playing the updated 1.1.0 version, which removed that glitch. The goal of this run is to complete every level from start to finish and beat the final boss. Alright, now with everything laid out, let's start a new save file. The game starts with a running section. There are a few obstacles we have to avoid, but it's pretty easy to dodge do this! <sighs> okay. I got 1% and I haven't even done anything yet. We get past the first part of the game and we're introduced to the first of many combat sections. This game really likes to cycle through a bunch of different gameplay styles. Whether it be running, fighting, or platforming, each section contains hazards we need to avoid. We have the choice to maneuver through these parts as Sonic, Tails, Amy, or Knuckles. While everyone controls identically during a running section, each character has unique strengths and abilities that could help us get through the fighting and platforming. During this first fight, the game won't let us switch to Tails for some reason. This absolutely sucks because Tails is undoubtedly the best choice for everything. Not only is he the only character with ranged attacks, but he also has Buddy Boss. These little guys will stun the first enemy they see by constantly attacking them for a brief period. With both of these tools, we can keep a good amount of space between us and the opponent while dealing consistent damage. Tails has the makings of being a great zoner, so he will be our go-to brawler. Furthermore, he also excels in platforming. His specific routes are usually not particularly hazardous, plus we can use his two tails to descend slowly and even skip small chunks of levels. That's not to say the other three can't be useful. They can still offer something beneficial. Since we're stuck with Sonic, we'll go over him next. He doesn't really add anything to platforming, but for combat, he has the homing attack. It locks onto enemies terrifically, the damage is good, and the final hit is an explosion, which covers a decent chunk of the area. After beating up those robots, we take a jog in the forest, meet up with Amy and Knuckles, and throw some more hands. One important thing to note is that we can press the shoulder buttons to dodge. Obviously, this grants us invincibility, but more importantly, we can perform this mid-combo. This will be a tremendous help if we ever find ourselves in a sticky situation. As we're being forced to play Knuckles, we should talk about his strengths too. Knuckles is also a great choice for combat. While he lacks the range that Tails has, he makes up for it with the sheer amount of brute force he is packing. Seriously, this guy absolutely murders everything on screen. As for platforming, I'd recommend using anybody else if given the option. 
his paths are littered with hazards, and he climbs a little too slowly to deal with them. We may as well round off all the playable characters by discussing how Amy performs. I'm gonna be straightforward with y'all, she is easily the worst fighter. All of the guys have something that would be beneficial for combat, but Amy, she doesn't offer anything new to the table. Her specials are too laggy, and her normals are too slow. On the flip side, Amy is rather spectacular with platforming. While her routes are slightly more dangerous than Tails and Sonic's, they are made considerably easier with her triple jump. Let me tell you, that one extra jump she has really made a huge difference. So yeah, avoid her with combat, but use her in platforming. Back to the main game, we discovered an ancient tomb, moved those mirror things around, and revived a thousand-year-old reptile. After a quick battle, Tails creates, undoubtedly, the most useful tool we can use for this run, the Ener Beam. With it, we can lasso an enemy, then throw them into other enemies to rack up damage, down a bottomless pit for an insta-kill, or even just on the ground to knock them out for a few seconds. I know that doesn't sound like much, but the main benefit we get from this is that it allows all four of our heroes to fight without getting dangerously close to the robots. This is practically made for this challenge, so it is going to be our go-to method of attack. Soon after, we grab hold of a zipline and Lyric starts chasing us down. It ends with us being flung off the track right into the first hub world, Cliff's excavation site. Cliff tells us we need to find all the chaos crystals if we want to stop Lyric. Luckily, there's one in the mines nearby that can easily be obtained. But before we can leave, we need to rescue some miners down in the shaft. Right after saving them, the game tries to give me a heart attack. I was able to evade and lasso the enemies easily. You'll notice that larger enemies take longer to reel in, which leaves us more vulnerable to attacks. But we make it out of this one unscathed. Since we did such an amazing job, the miner thanks us with a power glyph. Throughout the two hub worlds, we can find some NPCs that have a little side quest for us to do, all of which are optional, except for that minor minor one we just did. If we complete one, we are rewarded with the power glyph of our choice. To give you an idea, they kinda work like held items in a Pokemon game. There's nine to choose from, but most of them are pretty... useless, even if we were playing the game normally. Only three of them could help us out with this challenge. The Fastball Special, which raises the attack of enemies thrown with the Ener Beam. The Ground Pound will add a shockwave to our... Ground Pound. And the Big Bang causes additional explosions to defeated enemies. After thinking it over, I decided to choose the Ground Pound. Not so much as an attack, but more of a quick get off of me tool. So I equipped everyone with it, then we made our way to the Abandoned Research Facility. Before we get there, we have another speed section. One thing to note about these parts is that most of them are not automated. If we hold the analog stick back, or even don't touch the stick at all, we can actually slow down, stop our character, and move around freely. With this in mind, we can take our time weaving through most of the obstacles. Although we can't do this everywhere, slowing down to carefully avoid everything will be helpful. It only takes about two tries before we make it to the next level. We light up some tiles on the floor, then Amy and Knuckles climb upwards to activate a switch. This opens up a trap door, temporarily separating Sonic and Tails from the team. While exploring as Knuckles and Amy, we get introduced to the first enemy who can shoot projectiles. Throw him off to the side, then hit the button in the middle to make a small horde of enemies to appear. Admittingly, this one took a couple of tries, because half the robots can snipe us from the other side of the platform, and as stated before, reeling in larger enemies leaves us vulnerable. This made me realize I'm being too impatient with these combat sections. Instead of quickly demolishing everything in sight, I should be waiting for an opening and then striking at the perfect time. In other words, we need to be playing the patient game with this. I mean, if we do, we make it through unharmed. We light up some more tiles and push another button to fight even more enemies. This one also took multiple tries, but the more I did it, the more I got a feel for our patient style of combat. In fact, right after, we push yet another button to fight even more enemies, but at this point I had gotten so used to our new fighting tactics that I beat this one on my first attempt. We cut back to Sonic and Tails, who just unlocked the ability to run on water, or as this game calls it, Hydro Dashing. We Hydro Dash to a room, deal with some enemies, activate a switch, Hydro Dash to another room, deal with some more enemies, activate two switches, Hydro Dash some more, and then we find Maya. She explains we need to power up a generator in order to time travel. As Knuckles and Amy cross this chasm, climb courageously, then activate four fuse reactors. Just be aware that some enemies will pop in unannounced. With everything up and going, we can now travel through time.
That's right, Shadow's in this game. Being the first boss, you think dodging his attacks would be nice and easy, but we have a few things to worry about. For one, the camera follows us a little too well. If we're too far up, we won't be able to see the bottom half of the arena. Dodging his attacks from this far up might take a little bit of luck. Speaking of attacks, Shadow has an active hitbox whenever he's glowing, so we need to wait until he cools down before we make our move. Nimbly avoid his attacks, then when the time is right, set up the buddy bots and start pelting away. While the first two phases were relatively easy, the final phase was a little tricky. Shadow can now teleport, and he loves to appear dangerously close to us. But if we time our dodges correctly, we should be able to phase right through him. Now just attack him whenever it's safe until we kick him into next week. With Shadow taken care of, we can move on to Lyric's Weapon Facility. Rescue Tails, hop on some gears, and fight some robots. This next area contains a secret room, and inside is a turtle who gives us our second power glyph. Since we've been mainly attacking with the Ener Beam, I unlocked the Fastball special. And I'm gonna be totally honest, I completely forgot about the Ground Pound. I, I might have used it, like, once in this run. So I think upgrading our meta-defining lasso is definitely the right move. Once arriving in the next room, we are greeted by the most annoying enemy in the whole game. These eyeballs are unusually bulky and they stay invincible for unnecessarily long periods of time. Luckily for us, it was about this part of the run where I started noticing a handy little trick. When we throw one enemy at another enemy, the one being thrown will knock the one that it hit into the air. If we lasso the airborne enemy, we can quickly re-grab them, and while the other one is unable to attack, we can again throw the robot. We can keep repeating this process until there is only one enemy left to destroy. With another new strategy, we make short work of these robotic rascals. We do a floor puzzle, fight a big horde of enemies, do another floor puzzle- LASER! I lost where I was, let me check my notes real quick. Uh, puzzle, fight, puzzle, fight, puzzle, fight. Then open a zipline in the other room, but before we can use it, we need to fight. Wow, I've never noticed how repetitive this game is. Now we swing ourselves into the Sentinel. Honestly, there's nothing to talk about here. This whole section was surprisingly easy. The only interesting thing I can say is that I was running askew during this speed section. We escape the elevator and return to the present. Ooh, I almost forgot. When we walk over to this thing here, we can add a little stat boost to our team if we acquire enough crowns and robot parts. Crowns can be found hidden in the levels, while robot parts come from defeating enemies and opening chests. Sadly, most of these stat boosts are associated with rings, which are worthless for this run. The only one that might help out is Tag Teamer, which increases the damage when multiple characters fight together. I doubt this will make a difference since we're fighting away from everyone, but I'll keep enhancing it in case it actually does something. I decided to do one more side quest to get the last useful power glyph. After destroying all the robots in Chef Woody's food supply, we obtained the Big Bang. I was planning on using this in case I needed to change up my strategy, but I'm gonna be honest, I kinda forgot about this one as well. Um, not that it really mattered. The fastball special is way too good not to use. After beating up more robots, we ride our newly refurbished boat into the River Rush. This was one of the moments I was dreading the most. We need to clear seven rooms of constant bombardment as we're controlling this slow-moving raft, and to make matters worse, each enemy can spawn like 10 missiles at a time. There's a lot to deal with, but on the plus side, we can defend ourselves. The raft is equipped with three weapons, a water gun, an ice cannon, and a mortar shot. Going into this, I really didn't have much of a plan. At first, I was only using the water gun and found out that was getting me nowhere. Then I tried using only the mortar shot and quickly realized I should never use it again. It is powerful and it does a decent job at taking out the missiles, but it activates too slowly and it goes next to nowhere. Eventually, I came up with an actual strategy. First, with the ice cannon, freeze everything coming our way, then while they're frozen, swiftly destroy as much as we can with the water gun before they thaw out. While this strategy is slow, it's literally the best I have. After getting accustomed to our new tactic, we got through the first room swimmingly. 
The second room was also straightforward. Just note that whenever we destroy one of these machines up here, two more will appear behind us. Get rid of one of them quickly so we don't become too overwhelmed. Also, I notice whenever we destroy an enemy, all of their missiles will vanish with them. So I can do cool things like this. When entering the third room, Eggman will start shooting cannonballs. He doesn't fire them in rapid succession, so they are generally easy to avoid, but because of this, we are practically moving at a snail's pace. Slowly and steadily, we make our way to the fourth room. It's more or less the same as the third room, except something weird happens. It looks like the freeze cannon is hitting an invisible wall, and one of the enemy's missiles are spawning underneath the water, so I could not hit it, but it could still hit me. Thankfully, those were just some random glitches, and the game corrected itself the next time we returned. The fifth room is like the previous two, except Eggman shoots more frequently, nothing we couldn't handle. The sixth room was definitely the worst. I mean, look at the amount of enemies we have to deal with. They take up way too much space and fire way too many missiles. And of course, this would be the only room where Eggman is sporadically shooting at our current position. They're barely giving us any wiggle room to work with. Now I know this seems scary, but if we follow this strategy and not charge in headfirst like an idiot, we can make this room slightly more bearable. First, when we enter, get rid of this machine here. Make sure not to go near the middle when doing so, because that will trigger four more to emerge from each of the corners. When they rise from the water, destroy the two on the left. Two more of them will appear shortly after, so quickly dispose of them. Then gradually progress to the right side until the final machine is destroyed. We manage to squirm our way to the final room, where Eggman is firing his cannon in this narrow passage. Being horrified at this, I held back on the analog stick to go slower, hoping it would give us more time to react. Funny enough, we were moving so slowly that the cannonballs fell in the water before they could reach us. This allowed us to safely finish the level. After a slow, agonizing two hours of rafting, we have a nice, easy speed section until we arrive at the pit. Amy wants our main man all to herself, so for now, we're stuck with Sonic and Knuckles. Everything goes smoothly until we start up this drill machine. What we need to do is throw the robots at the center to weaken it. Unfortunately, there's too many enemies to deal with in such a tiny space like this, plus we can't move the camera, so some of them can shoot us off screen. The first time I got hit, I did the usual pause, then save and quit, but whenever the save file reloads, we're put into a cutscene. After the game loads, one of the robots acts almost immediately and shoots us before we can do anything. I didn't know what to do here. Should I shrug off that hit because this cutscene is normally triggered farther back, or should I restart the entire game until I get back to this point? Thankfully, I did not have to do either. I found out that this cutscene can be skipped by pressing the pause button. Now we're able to react fast enough to deal with these two before restarting the drill machine. Within a few more attempts, we destroy this contraption and move on to the next section, which consists of more fighting. Easy peasy. Following that is a 2D section. Oh, help! Knuckles, you fool! You just hit me! This is not how it ends for you! Yes, it is! You made me lose a re- Oh. Uh, thanks. After a 2D section, a new kind of robot emerges from the lava. This is the first huge enemy of the game. They can take a lot of hits, cover large areas with their attacks, become temporarily invincible, and cannot be grabbed with the inner beam. At least not until an icon pops above their head, but that doesn't appear until we deal enough damage to it. Tails would be a natural at handling these bigger enemies, but since Amy stole him, we need to get up close and personal with this one. At first, I was experimenting with this hit-and-run strategy, which resulted in failure. Then I just remembered we're able to dodge in the middle of a combo. So for this next attempt, I just brute forced my way through and destroyed it in a matter of seconds. <laughs> Why was that so easy? Not long after that, we get into another fight with one large robot accompanied by his henchmen. Carefully get rid of the smaller robots, then deal with the bigger one. When we defeat enough of them, reinforcements will pop in, making this already small arena even more cramped. By the way, there are also bombs in each of the corners. Their timer will start if we get too close to them, and they cover a decent amount of area. 
If we look out for all of that, we might have a 10% chance of survival. Seriously, defeating all these enemies in such a compact location was... not an easy task. After an hour's worth of retries, we finally reunite with the best boy and have our second boss battle with the Driller Worm. Being an absolute unit, the worm has attacks that can take up massive chunks of the area. In fact, some of them can take up the entire area. If that didn't sound bad enough, this is also the first boss polluted with enemies. While all of this looks menacing, just remember we still have our trusty dodge to guide us through. Plus, all of his attacks are as slow as molasses. We can see them coming from a mile away. Avoid everything, then while he's sucking, throw the enemies in his mouth. Once enough has been thrown, a cutscene will play showing the worm becoming dazed. Those flying eyeballs will shoot at us immediately when it ends. If we dodge them, we will have just enough time to drag it down and beat it to a pulp. Rinse and repeat for three phases, then steal his heart. Cliff rebuilds an airplane and he flies us to the second hub world, Bygone Island. Styx explains we need to find hidden treasures called shinies at the end of a trail of footprints. Once collected, they can be exchanged for crowns. I won't be thoroughly searching for these, but if I come across any, I'll definitely use them to help max out the tag teamer ability. Enough about that, let's move to Crater Lake. This level was a walk in the park. I literally don't know what else to say, so up next is Slowpoke Isle. It starts off with another simple speed section, followed by quite possibly the most infuriating part of the whole challenge. Lyric and Eggman join forces in hopes to sealing the crystals we have. During this first phase, Sonic and Tails are hydra dashing while Lyric is throwing little bursts of energy at us. These can easily be avoided by pressing Y to dip underneath the water. Sometimes he may throw down bigger bursts of energy that act as water mines, which cannot be dipped under. The biggest problem I had with this phase is that Lyric has no patterns to his attacks. Some attempts are rather simple, as he would attack sparingly, while other times he would use both sporadically. It feels like I'm being frame trapped here. If that wasn't bad enough, we also need to watch out for debris while zooming around. This one section normally takes a minute, but I think I spent an hour just trying to get past this part. When we're lucky enough, we can move into the second phase. Eggman will shoot a barrage of missiles at Amy and Knuckles. They all move like Olimar's ship in that one cutscene of the subspace emissary, so it's pretty difficult to predict where they're gonna go. Double jumping over the missiles usually works out. There's a small section where a bridge collapses, and once passing it, Eggman will continue to shoot at us. I ran underneath the bridge, and as we can see, the missile has already exploded. It seems to have disappeared, but for some reason, the explosion hitbox is still active. I don't think I have enough time to jump over the missile, and I'm thinking if I sidestep, I might hit the bridge. And then, I had an idea. For whatever reason, Amy will always start ahead of Knuckles, so I was thinking I would switch to her to pass underneath the bridge faster, giving us more time to avoid the first missile. When I tested this out, I discovered something rather interesting. I switched to Amy about here, and I noticed the bridge never collapsed and the missiles never appeared. I'm thinking there is a trigger somewhere around here that would signal the game to make those two things happen, but since I changed to Amy, I completely skipped over it, which easily let us complete the second section. The third phase is just like the first, only now Eggman joins in and starts firing alongside Lyric. And I swear, this stupid snake has pinpoint accuracy for no reason! Why are you throwing it all at me? But all is not lost. After about a hundred attempts, the RNG gods finally decide to show some mercy towards us so we can get to the final phase. Which honestly wasn't that bad. I mean, they had me at the first half, not gonna lie, but after a certain point, it looked like they weren't even aiming for us. So after four hours, we finally complete this wretched chase and arrive at Slowpoke Isle. In this area, a giant horn needs to sound off in order to open up a giant door. This can be accomplished by pressing four buttons. Specifically, the like, share, comment, and subscribe buttons. <laughs> Following that are some unique locations, but nothing really noteworthy occurs, at least not until we reach Metal Sonic, who's actually the next boss. It starts off a little annoying, 
half of the time we can't see what's in front of us, and some of Metal's attacks are active for disgusting amounts of time, like his explosion attack. Look, this hitbox lasted longer than the entire Boom franchise did. But it doesn't take long to memorize where all the hazards are, and getting the timing to dodge the explosions also came naturally. Plus, there's nothing unpredictable about this fight. Metal will always follow the same set pattern for each of his phases. So, with enough trial and error, we turn Metal into scrap and nab another victory. With another boss down, we set course to the next level, Ocean Purification Plant. Sonic and I will go get the crystal. Knuckles and Tails, you stay back in case the village is attacked again. Amy, Tails is our best fighter. Do you really want to make this hard on yourself? Who put you in charge? Thank you, Knuckles. I say Tails and I will stay back and protect the village. Wait, wait no! Okay, then. The level starts with us obtaining a fake crystal, followed by a short chase sequence. After some more platforming and fights, we start pulling these two levers. When we do that, the Guardian reappears for a battle. Just throw the enemies at its head until it decides to retreat. Be on your toes, it has an attack that covers the entire floor. After the Guardian flees, we have some more platforming, a battle with one giant robot, and at the end of the level, a battle with two giant robots. Nothing too troublesome. Collect the real crystal, then escape in the undersea vault. In this sub-level, we navigate a crumbling underwater cavern inside of this U-boat. Even with the new controls, there wasn't anything to worry about. What in the world? What is hitting me? Oh, I see. We seem to have hit this piece of rubble in the bottom left corner while we were cruising above it. That is an awkwardly tall hitbox. I'm sure if we shimmy over to the middle, we- Huh? The top right corner is the farthest away from it. There's no way. Surely shooting at it would get rid of it. This thing is covering the entire screen and there's no way to get rid of it. Wow. Okay, maybe I just messed up some of the data and that glitched out the Rubble's hitbox. I I'm sure nobody else has this problem. L let me just double check some playthroughs on YouTube. Uh, what about this guy? They just got unlucky. What about this one? I don't believe it. This has been in the game since day one. Given the game's rush development, I shouldn't be surprised at this, but still, there is no way to destroy this thing and we'd always take damage. This is looking very grim for us. I was even about to call it quits and say this challenge is impossible. Until that single gear in my head started turning and I remembered something. On the ground, we use the shoulder buttons to dodge. But we're driving a machine underwater, I don't think. There's still a chance. Okay, so if everything lines up, when we make our way to the top right corner and mash the right bumper, we will not take any damage and make it through unharmed? Oh, baby, it worked! We can continue with the challenge! Anyway, as I was saying before, even with the new controls, there wasn't anything to worry about. The last section with the three guardians looks incredibly dangerous, but surprisingly, posed no threat to us. With that level finally complete, we can now advance to Creeper Gorge. The first zipline takes us to a small area with that giant eyeball, who will immediately roll up just as we land. We can easily stall it out by using the homing attack on the flying robot. Carefully get rid of it when the time comes. A little later, we find ourselves traversing a thorny maze. Since all the walls can hurt us, we have less room to work with, but still nothing we can't manage. The bounce pad we use to escape sends us to a tiny platform with some enemies. Easily disposing of them, we then ride the zipline to another sort of maze. This time, vines will pop out of the ground. Intimidating at first, but it ends up being much easier than expected. Once we finish beating up some losers, we can finally play as our terrifically talented two-tailed technician again. Soon after, Eggman spots us and starts firing some dud missiles at us. They can be picked up with the inner beam and thrown into breakable objects, like this door. Once broken down, we have the option between an Amy path and a Tails path. At first, I tried out the Tails path. There's a part where we need to use the Buddy Bots to activate a switch, but when that happens, a small cutscene activates. While it plays, we can't move, but for some reason, everything around us is still in motion. Eggman took advantage of that and took a clean shot of us. Amy's route has no such cutscene, so we go her way instead. Sometime later, we get into this big open area that's filled with enemies and vines that burst out of the ground. 
If we carefully dispose of them, we can then pull four sets of levers that open up a pathway to the zipline above us. Once we grab hold of it... You what?! Oh my god! This took a surprising amount of tries. Because of the awful depth perception, squeezing through Eggman's cannonballs took a little longer than it should've, but eventually we swooshed between them. Oddly enough, we only needed to avoid the first set, as he doesn't even bother aiming any of the following shots. Then we prepare ourselves for the easiest boss of the whole run. I'm not even joking. Despite the onslaught of projectiles and the surplus of enemies, I almost defeated Eggman on my first try. The only thing I need to say is be careful when you pull down his mech, because that'll leave you wide open for a while. Collect the Scepter of Darkness, then we warp ourselves to Sky Citadel. This level was mean. And at last, we crash land to our final destination. That's the, that's the only thing I put for this section. Oh, okay. So, uh, going off script for a moment. Sky Citadel isn't hard, but the thing is, the game does a really weird job at placing the save points. Like, usually there's three or four in a level, but for this one, there's only two. One at the beginning, and one right after the fake death cutscene. And in between the two save points and the end of the level is like, 20 to 30 minutes worth of traveling. So having to restart basically an entire level multiple times over one little mistake, it, it was like boring and tedious and time consuming when it shouldn't be. And the bosses did this too. Like you think I could just immediately retry the shadow fight? No, the save point isn't right before the boss battle, the save point is right before I start up the generator. You think I could redo the drill worm fight? No, I had to redo an entire battle before I can retry the boss fight. I mean, granted, both of these things didn't take too terribly long, but the fact that the bosses took me like 20 tries each, and I had to redo both of those things before I could get to the actual fight, was... It's not good. It, it wasn't good. <laughs> That's like the best way I could put it. It not good. <laughs> So, I guess now is a good time to mention that I'm using the actual Wii U hardware for this. I'm not using emulation or save states or um, any of that jazz. I feel like I should just mention that for all of my videos now. Hang on, can you emulate a Wii U game? Do, do we live in an age where we can do that? Holy crap, we can! I'm pretty sure most of y'all already knew this, but this is news to me. I live under a rock, so I don't know Jack. Is that all I gotta say? Yeah, I think that's all I gotta say. I don't know how to transition out of this, so, um, here we go. And at last, we crash land to our final destination, Lyric Slayer. Our first order of business was to get rid of the fire tank, the ice tank, and their two goons. Solo Tales wasn't working out so well, so instead I changed up the method and started the battle with Knuckles. I had him dismantle the Fire Lord, then I switched back to Tails to finish off the Snow Queen. One ginormous battle and a speed section later, the Miser Brothers demanded a rematch. Unsurprisingly, they still never stood a chance. We arrive at this area where we need to pull a lever in order to do some of those floor puzzles. The jumping doesn't always want to register for this part, so I'd recommend taking your time here. Repeat this process three times, then take the speed section to the next part where we solve three more floor puzzles. After the final tile is lit, jump into the tube so it can transport us to the- Jump into the tube so- Jump into the tube. The tube. The tube. Am I missing like a switch or something? Oh no, it just did not want to work then. Okay. Shortly after, we arrive at the final save point, run one final marathon, and prepare to take on the final boss. Lyric. This serpent scoundrel begins the battle flying in the air. He can't be hit while he's up there, so we need to wait for him to stoop to our level. Although, be warned, he doesn't just descend to the ground, he literally comes crashing down. In fact, this battle has a decent amount of hazards we need to look out for. Most of his grounded attacks are snappy, and they take up a decent chunk of the area. With each new phase, he gains a brand new attack to use while he's in the air. Not only that, there's a never-ending slew of robots we need to constantly look out for. Though the enemies can be thrown at Lyric, I can't really tell if it's actually hurting him. He doesn't really react when they hit him. 
Once we deal enough damage, grab his tail with the Ener Beam, and that'll open up a character-specific route. Then carefully traverse through the pathway, break the container, and reclaim the stolen crystal. We need to endure all of that for four phases. In theory, this looks like it would be difficult, but in practice, it kinda isn't? I know, I know, I should make the final boss sound more climactic, but it just isn't that hard. His grounded attacks don't come anywhere near us because we're using a zoner. Lyric getting new aerials is scary, but all of them are pathetically slow. And while there is a continual wave of enemies, one, they never come in large numbers, and two, they can simply be thrown off the ledge. But the one thing that made me realize this was going to be easy was another byproduct of the rush development. It's hectic out here, bullets flying everywhere, the bad guys attacking from every corner. I don't want to get hit. So as counterplay, I kept spamming the dodge button to evade everything. And this was working. Suspiciously well. I wasn't getting hit once. Dare I say, I was untouchable. This looked very dubious to me. So I went to go test this out in a few other levels. Okay, that's pretty reasonable. I... I... You... What? Uh, what? Wow, we technically had a get-out-of-jail-free card this entire time. That would have been nice to know earlier. This would have made parts of this challenge a lot less stressful. Oh well, better late than never, I suppose. With our newly discovered cheap tactic, this final fight is nothing more than a test of patience. All we need to do is attack the snake when the coast is clear, and if things get too out of control, just spam the dodge. Also, during the final phase, not only is he stuck on the ground, but his minions will never spawn. So for the last portion of the game, all we need to do is play lame, then deliver the finishing blow. Impossible! No! And with that, we have finally completed the challenge. Is it possible to beat Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric without getting hit? Yes, it is. Thank you very much for sticking around for this long. I hope you enjoyed the video, have a wonderful day, and stay amazing. Okay, going unscripted again. Um, uh, first off, huge shout out to my friend for lending me the Wii U. Um, funny enough, this is actually the second time he lent it to me, because the first time he did it, it was way back in January of 2021, and that was when I originally recorded this challenge an entire year before I made the shadow video. And I just didn't feel like finishing it. The original uh, draft of it, I just wasn't very pleased with it, so I put it on the side. And then the man, the myth, the legend himself lent it to me again just so I could finish this video. So thank you so much, my dude. Also, I'm going to try and post a little more regularly because before this video, I only made like two videos within a span of six months. So hopefully if I'm quick enough, I could get like maybe one video a month or maybe even one every three weeks, which could be really freaking nice. Um, yeah, yeah, I think that's it.